Hello guys, welcome to Boxing Block Center, the home of Nigeria Fabulous. And please, if you're new to this channel, make sure you click the like and of course the subscribe button right now. And also go to the notification bell icon, click it and select all so turn up a new banger. A new exclusivity will definitely be notified. Let's talk about Francis Ngano, aka the Predator. Well, we all know that he's been officially ranked by the WBC, um, steadily sitting at uh, number 10. Uh, very interesting that WBC decided to rank Ngano um, above every other everways who have been like basically fighting their way up for a long time. We know that boxing is a business, but I don't think... Uh, he deserved that now. Of course, we know he beat Fury. I would say he beat Fury. Let's keep it right. I think he beat Fury. But it's still, even if he beat Fury convincingly and stuff like that, he still didn't, doesn't deserve that. But one interesting thing about Ghana is that he said he made more money in the in the fight against Tyson Fury one night than he, than he, than he made in the, pa in the past couple of years uh, as a UFC fighter what does that mean like is it that there's more money like there's more money in boxing is it as we know boxing is doing a lot of things wrong but it also mean boxing it might might not be perfect but when it comes to financial stability there is boxing has more to offer to the to the fighters than uh than ufc uh adewale let's get you on here right now to give your take on this matter and Ganu also said he doesn't want to fight uh Anthony Joshua uh that he style he feel like he uh, uh, the fight against um Wada is bigger and that he is waiting for the outcome of uh Usyk uh, Usyk, uh Fury so what do you make of, of this comments coming from Ngano? Honestly, um, I think, and you guys are going to disagree with me. That's fine. WBC ranking Francis Ngannou in top 10. I don't think that's bad because Fury being their champion and was arguably okay. defeated. <laughs> and was arguably Finish. defeated by Tyson. I mean, sorry. Arguably, if Tyson Fury was defeated by Francis Ngannou in the eyes of the fans, then... And he's the champion of the WBC. Then I think putting him in the top ten is not far fetched. I'm, that's just my opinion, personally. Plus, I'm biased. Obviously, I love Francis. He's my hero. Okay, so I support any success that Francis achieves. As far as the money, um, the only reason why Francis Ungano probably made so much money against Tyson Fury was because the Saudis paid for it. If the fight was organically generating money from pay-per-view sales, I'm not sure if they could have made that same amount of money. I, I, I highly, highly doubt it. But it's possible, you know, these American fans, especially the UFC fans, they they, they are a little bit delusional, you know. So but it flopped, could have paid... it flopped in the UK in, in the US. Really, really oh, flopped. it flopped. Six, oh. seven thousand. Oh, I heard those rumors. Sixty-seven thousand. No, it's not rumors. Sixty-seven thousand, and in the UK, the three hundred and eighty-five. But they say around four hundred k in the UK. Absolute flop in both countries. Okay, then if that's the case, let's keep it real. Without the Saudis, Francis Ogano would have been better off financially with the UFC because the UFC claimed, according to Dana White, we were going to offer him eight million dollars to fight John Jones. So if it flopped if it flopped because in, listen it flopped you have to understand it flopped because nobody gave Ngano a chance not the hardcore boxing fans people saw that that fight as um a show like basically like um like an exhibition 
Not as yeah, mo- that, like, that's, not, that's not part of it. More than that. More than that, the soil has nothing. See, but, but I tell you right now, if that fight happened, a rematch happened, it will, be, it will sell, it will sell a lot. I'm t- you doubt me? Oh, yeah. Oh, we'll yeah. do a oh, more the rematch, yeah. Yeah, but the yeah. first one flopped anyway. Flopped. Yeah, the first one had to flop because it's like, okay, the boxing fans didn't give Gano a chance. The MMA fans didn't give Gano a chance. Let me ask you a question, Ray. So the first fight, if that was against Joshua or Wilder, do you think they would have done better numbers? Yeah, better numbers, but it still would be so, huge numbers like that. Yeah, but it will be huge enough. It will be huge enough. It will be huge. So that is just to say that part of the reasons why that flop is because Fury isn't the style we think he is. I'm sorry. But it's, it's, funny that, it's funny that Fury has fought more in America than Joshua. Yeah, but even in America, have they made profit on Fury? No. ESPN hasn't made no profit on him. No. I think they made some profit in the second Wilder fight, the Fury Wilder 2. With what because they paid they sold, them, they sold 1. You... something million pay per view. Mm. No, they didn't. They didn't break a million, bro. They didn't. You can check it online. They didn't break a million. It was eight hundred thousand. They didn't. But they you didn't know what? I, honestly, at the end of the day, Francis Ungano is such a phenomenal story. That guy is an inspiration for me personally. Mm. You know, mm. I'm older than the guy, but he's an inspiration for me because we come from the same part of the world, and we've seen many, um, many of our people that have died crossing the Sahara Desert trying to get yeah. to Europe, escaping right. political, economic um, hardship in that re- in that world region. We right. see how people are enslaved, treated like, bro, people have suffered, man. This guy did not let none of that stuff stop him from achieving what he has achieved. He even got to the top, the top level of, of the UFC, <laughs> defended the world title against a very, very good heavyweight, Cyril Gan, and then told these guys, Bro, I don't like your financial situations. I don't want to be owned by you. I can take risks. I've always took risks my entire life. And he did. He took that risk. The Saudi Arabia situation came in, paid for the risk, paid him more money than he would have made if he fought John Jones. Fact, so fact. Francis Ngannou's story, I'm telling you, that's so it's such an inspirational story. The entire stars were lining up for, for him. And I'm just happy for the guy. You know, I'm very, very happy for Francis. Mm. So, my Joe. Okay, I'm just going to come in quick because I need to go quick. Now, um, see, there's a catch-22 to this whole thing, right? I, I, I am so, so, so happy for Francis Ngano. I think that that man is a fantastic man. I think that he's a warrior. He's determined. And you don't come by people like that easily. And you don't see people like that every day. And for Francis, I am so excited, all right? for what he's done in his life and what he's achieved in his career. And the guy is down to earth as well. I was watching his Instagram Instagram video recently. He's in Cameroon as we speak. And, you know, the guy is just, he's just so laid back and just a cool guy, you know? So I like him for that. And I'm so happy for all the things he has achieved so far in his life. And I hope that he achieves more. I hope that he makes more money. I hope that he wins more belts. I hope that he becomes a bigger star as well. Well, in saying all of that, right? Now, he fought Fury. I have been saying for the longest time that Fury is not what you guys think it is. Okay? Fury is good, but great. Because Fury is one of those guys where he enters into a room, right? And he shouts the loudest. He shouts. People think that he is the best in the room. He wants to be heard. He manipulates people, he's a fraud, he's a liar, he's a trickster. But Fury is good, but he's not great. I have been saying this for the longest time. People are like, oh, he beat Klitschko, he beat Wilder three times, and all of that. It doesn't matter. How many stiff competitions has Fury actually faced? How many? All right? And he took Ungano for granted. He took Ngano for granted. He thought he would just come in there and just play around Ngano and whatever, whatnot. But he got a surprise. Okay. And I'm happy that Ngano was able to expose Fury a little bit more. The only thing I'm not happy about is the fact that Wilder couldn't even do that. But um, Ngano was able to expose Fury a bit more. But who knows, actually, 
um, WADA might have helped to 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 break down Fury. Actually, I think I believe that WADA did help to break Fury. Even I don't think Fury is as good, and I don't think his punch resistance is as great as as it was many years ago. I think that if you if Fury were to be in there with somebody who is a real boxer and a very very strong um, puncher, I think I think that at this stage Fury might even get knocked out. But in saying all of that, um, I think that the whole idea of rate, uh, ranking um, Ngano as number ten in the in the WBC ranking list, I think, is a disgrace. I think that Suleiman, or whatever his name is, is a scum of the hurt. I don't think that somebody who has had only one professional bout and it's, it was a loss on record. All right, I don't think that he should be ranked in the in the top twenty. I don't care if he fought the number one in WBC and all of that. No, that's not how ranking works. All right, there's the likes of Ifia Jagba, Sanchez, all these other guys who have been fighting for years. All right, they have had to build their way up. So you want to tell me that on a bad day, right, where Fury is not at his best and you put him there with Ajagba and Ajagba knocks him down or something like that. And then Ajagba... Lo- okay, so let's put it this way. The way Ngano performed, right, Take the name Ngano out of it and put Ajagba in there. So do you think that they would have automatically just bumped Ajagba up because of that? No. No. They, would have, no. they wouldn't. They would just say, oh, it was just a bad day in the office. But they wouldn't give him that kind of... They wouldn't bump him the way they, 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 they bumped Ngano. I do not have anything... Come on, Ngano is my brother, man. He's, we're from around the same part of the world. But I want to take sentiment out of it. I'm not going, I'm not talking about the, 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 the realistic situation on ground. That is a disgrace. I'm sorry. I don't care what anybody says. It's an absolute disgrace. You cannot rank him number 10. He's his first fight. One. One fight. One. Brother. But brother. Bro, brother. I, I have a comeback for that. You said recently that, you know, when money talks, best friends become enemies. Yeah, so this facts. guy Mauricio Suleiman is a thief. We all know that he's greedy. Yeah, yeah. He loves he's money, cool. money so much. He's so cool. the fact that he recognizes that um, Francis Ngannou has the potential to generate a maybe fifty million dollar fight, and he wants yeah. to be a part of the million dollar fight. True, true, true. That's why true. he put that guy in the top ten. That's yeah. exactly. But me, I'm happy. Done. It's to my benefit. <laughs> That's exactly what you done. That's what you done. But well, I'm happy for Ngannou. Um, but I don't think he is he's number ten. I think that any of those guys will probably beat Ngano. Um, but yeah, it is what it is. So I'm happy for the guy, man. Um, and then Ngano's talking about. I think Ngano has something. Ngano is not happy with AJ. Well, maybe not with AJ, but with at the end because Ngano actually wanted to fight Joshua. And then when they approach AJ, AJ, in a way, I kind of understand where AJ is coming from. AJ already gets a lot of criticism, and he was like saying, Well, if I fight Ngano and I beat him, you get what I'm saying? People are going to come for me, you know. And because of that, he didn't show any interest in fighting Ngano. And I think Ngano actually took that personally. I think he didn't like that, you know, more like, Who the hell do you think you are? That kind of a thing. And that's why Ngano is standing the way he is, you know, um, saying that the fight against AJ, blah, 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 is not interested, but you prefer to fight Wilder or um, or Fury. But I think the fight he should be going for should be a rematch with Fury, in all honesty, because that has already gathered a lot of steam now and it's probably going to be a big fight. But do I see that fight happening? I don't think it's going to happen because, in my opinion, um, Usyk is going to defeat Fury, and Fury is going to retire. He's not even going to have a rematch with Usyk. So that's how I say it. Thanks, bro. Um, Tajagbe, your take on this, bro? Over mode. Well, I think um, I think you know what everybody made a good point, but I think that. Ongano being at that, I said it just when we first started this uh, interview that Mauricio Sullivan is a is a thief, and he recognized oh that it was a flop, but Ongano brought a lot of hype. So let me put him in the top ten to bring a lot of hype. You know, it didn't make sense how Ongano just jumped to the top ten. You know, I guess it's better than having Andy Ruiz in there. So I. I is it, a, is it a good idea? No, it's not a good idea because it doesn't help boxing itself. What, what boxing 
was you forcing Tyson Fury to fight his mandatories and not hold up the heavyweight division. You know, to keep it moving. Uh, how the other how the other uh, sanctioning bodies are doing. You know, they're pushing these guys like, hey, you don't fight, we're gonna. I'm you know, coming. So that's how that's how it needs to be. I'm coming. Mr. Suleiman, for some reason, is not doing that. He's com he's literally the complete opposite of that, making up excuses after excuses. So until we got into this fight, how how was Tyson Fury not fighting his mandatory, but he fought Francis Ngannou. Francis Ngannou. Bro, what's the sorry sorry to call you. What's the WBC mandatory in the heavyweight division? It, it, it was uh let me see who's next no, it was, there's, who's no, there's, no, there's no mandatory so i said that they, they don't have a mandatory yet he said no it. they they had a mandatory it, the the negotiations was for Usyk, but remember it felt it, it, it didn't work it fell through and then he said oh he didn't have to fight because uh i forgot the excuse but he said oh no he said oh because the negotiations didn't work you know, and and um, and Ungano was there. They took they, instead they took Ungano. You know, he said, "Oh, the, we tried so many times to make a fight with AJ. We tried Rusek, but nothing worked. So I just said, yeah, he could fight Ungano. You know, we're gonna make this. We're gonna make this a, a a sanctioned fight. Apparently, so that's how that worked. Tyson Fury had a had 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 mandatories, but he just never wanted to fulfill them." And when he did want to fulfill him, he lowballed people, giving them deadlines. You know, he he fought he fought he fought uh, um, Chisora for some reason. I don't, I don't know why he even fought Chisora, but that's what he fought. You know, but that's how with 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 Bruce Suleiman taking sides, he should not be doing that. He's literally the guy ruining boxing. Out of all the belts, I don't know why people care about this specific belt he that he controls. I think his belt. Is the worst belt that could ever happen to this sport because he doesn't know how to stay out the. He doesn't know how to stay out the uh, the media. He's always in the media. Now he's complaining about the Ring magazine. The Ring magazine being a problem, you know. Why is why why are you why are you worried about the Ring magazine? But you're the issue at hand here, you know. But that's 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 where that's where this whole situation lies, man. But I think Francis Ngannou being there, I don't think it's a good idea. Cause they wouldn't, they wouldn't go from a boxer going to UFC and automatically saying, "Yeah, you're gonna be fighting. We're gonna put you in. We're gonna be having you in UFC 400. You're gonna be the guy headlining the fight." It's never gonna happen. They won't allow that shit. But why is why is Boris Osuluban even engaging that kind of behavior? But it just shows bro, you his character. Bro, if you think about it, Mauricio Suleiman single-handedly ruined this guy. This guy is a Confucianist, man. This guy brought in confusion into the 135-pound division with the old franchise title, Lomachenko, Devin Haney, and all that stuff, Teofimo Lopez. Did the same thing in 160 pounds with Jamal Chalo, um, franchise title. Next thing, Chalo got the belt eventually, and then has been inactive for two and a half years, still has the title, is fighting in 163 pounds next, in his next fight, and there is nothing happening. Did the same thing in 168 pounds. Canelo having a WBC belt, David Benavidez being the mandatory, not having the opportunity to fight Canelo back to back to back, having to clean up the entire division before having the opportunity. He's not even having the opportunity. He still has to fight Demetrius Andre. So, yeah, Mauricio Suleiman and the WBC is garbage. It's actually trash. I would have to agree, man. I would have to completely agree. I've been saying it the whole time. And they're gonna events. I, I'm pretty sure some people are noticing that's what Mauricio Suleiman is doing, but they gotta stand up to this guy and tell him, "Yo, you can't be in the media. You can't be choosing sides. You have to move these divisions along." And that's just the way. That's just as simple as that. But that's why I'm gonna end it, brother. So, guys, you heard it from our brother, Star Jack Bay, Miles Joe, and of course, uh, Dewale. I want to say big ups to each and every one of you. December is going to be big, man. We we'll have man i love to talk about it. and that oh my god i can't wait bro it's gonna be interesting bro can i can't wait that's two days before christmas huh wow amazing so whoever wins goes and celebrate christmas if they are christians you know with their family and uh, whoever loses probably go back i guess <laughs> god bless you guys 
Jerry. That won't be a good Christmas for them. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 bro. 